Hello and welcome to my little guide to Armour 2 editing. Today I'm going to try and get to grips with triggers. They were very uh, confusing and daunting when I first started, so hopefully I'll be able to shed some light on them. Press F3 or click on triggers in the sidebar and we'll get started. Double click anywhere on the map. This brings up your trigger way, your trigger box. A trigger is a non-physical entity in the game. It um, is basically used as a tool to make missions more complex, more fun, and more dynamic. All of those things. And um, the first couple of uh, things are quite simple to get to grips with. You can choose the um, shape of the trigger by clicking either rectangle or ellipse and depending on which one of those you've got you can make the trigger bigger or smaller by changing the values in axis A and axis B for instance if you are on rectangle and the two values are the same you'll have a square if you increase one it will make it a rectangle and the same with ellipse if they're the same there'll be a circle and then an oval angle defines which way the trigger will be facing um, in degrees so 0 is north uh, 90 is east and so on you get you get it once and repeatedly basically act, define how many times the trigger can be activated if it's just a one shot or repeated it's I know that sounds pretty simple and you know, I'm telling you stuff you already know, but um, activation. This is uh, where things get a little bit complicated, or did for me when I first started. Activation basically defines how it will be activated. Um, for instance, you've got a choice of sides. It's from anybody to up for and anyone in between. And that basically means that when someone of that side gets into the trigger then it will activate they will activate the trigger you've got radio commands here and um, if by choosing one of those that just means that the radio can the <laughs> the trigger can be activated by either a radio command or the radio on the map I'll go into that in depth uh, some of the time if it needs to be. And the last one is seized by. Now seized by works uh, it's quite interesting. This will activate when the seizing side, in this case that's op4, is deemed to be in control of the area. Um, this also works on timeout counter values a low level of domination will activate the trigger after a period of time close to the max timeout and vice versa so a high a high um, domination will activate the trigger close to the min timeout I'll go into timeout and count down a little later but um this uh, trigger type can also be used with any detected by side option meaning only units known to be detected by the side which is considered to be seasoning are calculated in um, whether that unit that side has control or domination over the trigger well I hope that made some sense there are some um, extra options about when you link the trigger to groups but they all work in the same way um, vehicle whole group group leader and any group member when you link this trigger to a group you get those uh, selected options and basically they all mean respectively um, it will only activate if if the vehicle or object <laughs> only activate that entity will activate 
and they basically mean that the entity that they're that you've chosen either vehicle hold group leader or whatever can activate the trigger when it satisfies the six conditions and speaking of conditions now um that's what we get on to next six conditions here present detected by blue four independent op four civilians are not present um these activation was who def who activates the trigger this is um the conditions that must be met for the trigger to activate um for instance this trigger I'm making now will be activated when the blue four are present inside the area. Or you can make it when blue four are detected by blue four or not present. And that's pretty self explanatory. I'm sure I, you don't really need me to go into um too much detail, but oh darn it I will anyway. Um detected by side by side. A unit considered detected is considered detected when a leader of any group on the detecting side, in this case that would be the op, yeah, detected by op4, in this case that would be op4, um, correctly identifies the detected unit's side. So if you had this trigger in place and um, an op4 uh, leader identified you as a blue four, the trigger would activate. Now, that wasn't too painful, was it? Hmm. See, triggers aren't quite as complicated as you might think. Countdown and timeout. Well, let's get down with countdown. Do 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 boo. Sorry, that was um, a reference joke to a British uh, daytime TV program. <laughs> getting on with it. Um, right. Once the con trigger's conditions are met, that's all the above, the trigger will wait a specified amount of time before activating. And you specify the amount of time in the mid, max, and min. Basically set them all to the same number. Timeout is a little bit more complex, but not much. Um, the trigger's conditions must be met for the duration of the specified amount of time before the trigger can be activated. And the amount of time is specified in the mid, min and max fields and you set them to different uh, times. Um, well, to go into more detail about the boxes, the mid, min and max, these define the period of time that the trigger is activated in seconds. Between these values, um, well, between the min and the max, and it will gravitate more towards the min, the mid. So, for instance, if the min was 5, the max was 15, and the mid was 10, then it could be anywhere from 5 seconds to 15 seconds, but it'd most likely be around 10 seconds. Hmm. Now we get to type. These are, everything in this drop down menu are effects that uh, take place immediately after the uh, on activation code block is completed. Um, none, I'll go through them none, the trigger will have no effect other than those listed in the on activation block, which is a little bit below us. Um, this, is, this is the default one. Guarded by side, this is uh, quite interesting. The trigger's center point will be defined as a point to be guarded. Uh, Guarded triggers do not activate, they only define guard points. Groups who have guard waypoints, and if you've watched my other video, you will see. Um, yes, in guard waypoints, induced guard mode will move to the first placed 
available unguarded guard point. So basically by clicking guarded by op4, guarded by blue4 and independent, you're creating a guard point for these um, different sides and the different sides will go to whichever is the highest priority um, defined by the first placed and uh, they will just guard there switch. This is going to be a useful one for waypoints. A switch trigger is very useful for breaking a groups out of cycle waypoint loops or moving groups away from hold or guard waypoints. When the trigger is synchronized with a waypoint, activating the, activating the trigger will instantly change the group's current waypoint to the first waypoint after the synchronized one. Very simple, but very, very useful. Um, end. End 1 to 6. These are for creating different endings if you're making a campaign of your own. Um, every uh, mission is going to need at least one of these, so you'll, you'll need it. But um, very simple setup, and you will need a code for doing the different endings. I may go into that in the future. Lose is for defining um, lose conditions, really. Um, it's not much to say. Um, ah, the information, the research I've got here tells me a little bit about it. Activating a trigger of this type, that's lose, will end the mission in failure. Note, this is not the same as the death of the player. If the mission part, if the mission is part of a campaign, the campaign can continue along different losing mission branches. Yes, well, and the only difference, like the end, the different numbers of ends have, is uh, what text is displayed in the debriefing. Um. We'll leave it as none. Name defines the name of the trigger, allowing it to be manipulated by script code. This is actually quite important. Um, this particular box, the name box, pops up in uh, the units when you're inserting units, and yes, very important. Text, let's see. If the trigger is activated by a radio command, this text will the place the default radio command name in both the command menu and on the radio visible on the map. So not a huge effect text has, but very interesting all the same. 